I just had an awesome idea. Suppose all matter and energy is made of tiny vibrating strings. Okay, what would that imply? I don't know. String theory is one of them topics that nearly everyone has heard about, yet no one really understands. They even mock the scientists. So here we go. String theory allows us to learn about the Big Bang and in the centre of black holes. Einstein's theory of general relativity breaks down in these places, and they are the two most interesting places in the universe. So because the theory breaks down, learning about these places is beyond our reach. String theory takes you before the Big Bang. To multiverses, a good image is the idea of a bubble, and we're stuck onto the bubble. We can't even leave the bubble. What string theory says is that there are many bubbles. Like when you get one of them bubble guns and it just blows hundreds of bubbles everywhere. Bubbles can collide and when they do collide it will combine the universes. Or they can go the other way and they can split in which new universes are created. So physicists think that the Big Bang is from either of these. The famous story Alice in Wonderland, where Alice falls through a rabbit hole and ends up in another place, is just like a wormhole. The classic idea of a wormhole is that when you draw two dots on a piece of paper, you can curve the paper to bring the two dots next to each other, thus creating a bridge between them. Now, there is an equation in string theory that predicts and allows wormholes to exist. The only question is, how practical is it to go through a wormhole? The truth is, we don't know. Many physicists are suggesting ideas about whether it is physically possible to put someone or something through a wormhole. If you could, you could effectively use this like a time machine. String theory really is a theory of everything. Like the standard model tries to model everything, string theory does the same, but is more inclusive than the standard model. When I say everything, I literally mean everything. It also includes time. Now, time machines are allowed in Einstein's equations, as they are in string theory. However, actually making one is really difficult. It would require a lot more energy than a DeLorean from Back to the Future. Now, on the other side of string theory, the actual strings, if you imagine a nice crystal, in fact, don't imagine it, here is my crystal. The crystal is made up of billions of atoms, which are all made up of smaller bits of matter, electrons, protons and neutrons. Then the protons and neutrons are made up of even smaller bits of matter called quarks. But this is when string theory takes over. It makes the claim that everything in the universe is made up of something even smaller than quarks and leptons. Inside are loads of tiny vibrating strands of energy that kind of look like strings. These strings are so incredibly small that if an atom was enlarged to the size of the solar system, a string would be about as large as a tree. That's really, really tiny. So here is the basic idea. Just, just like a guitar string, the different ways that it can vibrate based on how long it is and how tight it is, basically its frequencies, will cause it to make different sounds. The different ways that these strings vibrate will make the particle have different properties, such as mass, charge and spin. So the difference between you and me is simply just the tiny differences in our strings. The universe is made up of a gargantuan amount of these strings, and so the universe can be thought as a symphony. The most important part of string theory is that it connects two theories that cannot agree on anything, general relativity and quantum mechanics. While general relativity is smooth and flat, quantum mechanics is very jittery and irritable. What string theory does is it comes down and calms out quantum mechanics as it takes away these point particles and turns them into strings. This flattens out quantum mechanics in such a way that general relativity and quantum mechanics can be stitched together. It works in a beautiful way as mathematics comes together and allows string theorists to claim that they are fulfilling Einstein's dream of connecting all the forces and all the matter. However, the Achilles heel of string theory is that no experiment can measure these tiny vibrations, as nothing can get that small. However, due to science being science and you have to be able to disprove something with evidence, the theory is safe due to the fact that nobody can get this small to make an observation and collect evidence. My question is now, is string theory philosophy or physics? 
To make everything better, the complex equations require something that people struggle to get in their heads. Extra dimensions of space. Even Stephen Hawking said in his book, A Brief History of Time, that he struggles to see in three dimensions, and that is the one we live in. We have thought for centuries that there is only what we can see, three dimensions of space and one dimension of time, and anyone who suggested more was labelled crazy. The string theory goes all in and predicts it. But to make this claim, scientists had to explain how they could even make the claim. What they suggested was, if you imagine a traffic line held up by a cable, from here it looks like it's a one dimensional line. If you went to say an ant's perspective of the cable, suddenly there is thickness to it and you can now move up and down clockwise and anti-clockwise around the cable. This is what they suggest. Now what may seem like a single dimension from afar is actually two dimensions close up. But how could I draw this? How can I draw the unimaginable? Well, they suggested that if we have a grid, the grid represents part of space-time, two dimensions of space-time, we still have the third dimension, just gets even harder to draw on a 3D grid. So it is still there, we're just going to be working on this 2D plane. If we were to look really close, we could see that each one of these crossings, there is a slight cylinder shape, whereas the others are just lines. Adding a little thickness to the other dimension, a tiny curled up dimension. The best part of the mathematics of string theory is that we don't have just one, we have six extra dimensions. Now, explain how I could draw that. So, if string theory is correct, then we have six extra dimensions, and they are not new ones. We see them every day, we just don't know it. It's like all these dimensions are just tiny balls on this 2D piece of paper. Now, when Theodore Caluza was looking for another dimension, he had an interesting find. Now, back in 1907, Einstein decided that he wanted to understand gravity. People thought he was crazy to even begin, as they had a nice theory already by Isaac Newton that describes the motions of the planets and why apples fall on people. But even Newton had written down that he didn't understand how. He just predicted it. So Einstein developed a theory about space-time being a smooth surface, and objects with gravity cause dents in this surface. This then all worked out great for Einstein as all his predictions were correct. So Kaluza thought, what about the electromagnetic force? Maybe it too also dented a smooth surface. Except Einstein had stolen all the dimensions to bend. So he thought, if I want to describe one more force, I need one extra dimension. So he invented another spatial dimension. He worked on his theory, derived all his equations that Einstein had done for gravity, and then derived one more equation. An equation which happened to be the same as the one for electromagnetic force. The story goes that he then ran around his house screaming victory, that he had found the unified theory. But I digress. Back to six extra dimensions. So let's imagine a cornet, the musical instrument. You can make lots of different sounds by changing the way that the air resonates inside the metal tube. As you press the valves, it changes the way in the air moves through the corner and then changes a the note. They think that is the same for string theory. If we could get small enough, we could see these extra dimensions are influencing how strings vibrate and act. If you ever end up in a position where you're studying the mathematics of string theory, you'll find that it can only actually work with 10 dimensions of space and one dimension at a time. I know this seems weird as it predicts an extra 6, which means we would have 9 spatial dimensions, but it only works with 10, which suggests that we have another dimension on top of that. But, trust me, so we could just accept all these dimensions and that they're really, really small and compact, but are physicists just trying to hide these extra dimensions, or do they actually tell us something about the world? Do they lead to a way of understanding the most important numbers in the universe? Fixed numbers like the mass of an electron. Something that is measured to such an incredible degree of accuracy, yet nobody can say why these numbers take the values that they do. What they think is that the reason for these values are that it relies on the form of these extra dimensions. It has been modelled that if any of the constants were different to the ones that we have, the universe itself just wouldn't exist. For example, if the strength of the electromagnetic force was a little bit stronger, 
atoms would repel each other a little bit stronger, and nuclear fusion, the process that keeps stars going, would just break down, then we would have almost nothing left. Back to the wormholes at the start, now why should we find other universes? Because in trillions of years the universe will get cold and all life must die. Our laws of physics are a death sentence and the only way to escape this is not to be in the universe when it goes belly up. So it is for ultimate survival of the human race. That is why we must find the wormholes. So that is why string theory is so important. But as I have said, there is no way of proving this or disproving this at this moment of time. Maybe if you find a way, then they'll give you your Nobel Prize. Make sure you stick around for the rest of the series. Thanks very much. Bye.